Good morning everyone, my name is Ally Cam and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today this is the second video in the OutRun 944 build. Uh, not any wrenching that's going to be done today unfortunately. I'm still uh, recovering from a bit of an injury and the doctors don't want me doing anything too strenuous and that affects every aspect of my life. So today what I thought we'd be doing is we'd go all over a little bit about uh, what OutRun means. Uh, what my vision for the, the car is a little bit more, and how I, I got like obsessed with this particular project and where we're going to go with it from there. So the first thing that kind of put the bug in my ear was a few years ago when a friend of mine and I were driving out to the Oregon coast and we came across a, uh, an 80s DeLorean. And at the time he said uh, he really liked the way the 80s cars had those like sharp angles and lines and stuff like that. And I'd never really taken notice of them. Uh, you know, as a, as a kid, I grew up in the 90s, and a lot of the cars that I was really after at the time were those uh, Japanese, you know, style sports cars that had, you know, really cool curves and stuff like that. Like the, uh, the old Eclipse was always a big dream car of mine. Um, the Eagle Talon, obviously the other DSM version of that. Uh, and then, you know, obviously the Supra and, and other cars that came out of that era. That was the first time that I actually really started to take notice of 80s cars, uh, and then, you know, started to really, really get enraptured with uh, their design and how they looked and stuff like that, just because you don't really see that design element on the road anymore today. Uh, a few years after that, I started listening to a new kind of music called uh, Synthwave, and then a little bit later, just sort of an offshoot of that, the Retrowave movement as far as music goes. And, and about the same time I started reading a whole lot of cyberpunk novels uh, and really getting into that scene as far as, you know, the aesthetic, the messaging, the dystopian future. And I just couldn't get the imagery out of my head. And it was something that I became more and more obsessed with, started delving further and further into that culture. And that actually took me to the, uh, the Outrun style art. Outrun is kind of an offshoot of cyberpunk and it has a lot of the same imagery, those, those 80s kind of, uh, horizontally slanted grid squares, uh, there's usually a car driving through a desolate landscape in the middle of the night, you know, uh, racing towards some kind of confrontation in a distant city. And that imagery, that sort of tone, and that kind of uh, drama in every picture that I was seeing, that imagery really, really stuck with me, to the point where I actually got a uh, OutRun-style tattoo put on my left shoulder. It was about that time that I really started to feel like I needed to build something that was my own. I'm not much of an artist. I very rarely have any sort of artistic vision, but this became like a song in my head. I needed to put it to paper. I needed to build it. Um, and I think part of it was, was that um, I never really got to experience the 80s. I was a, a baby at the time. And uh, you know, I just wanted to see something, even tangentially, uh, feel something that was from that era in a way that no other experience really allows you to have. So that's when I decided I wanted to build a really true-to-form, retro-wave, outrun-style, cyberpunky, dystopian uh, car. And, and that's what led me here. The other thing that, that I was really doing at the time was I was starting to learn a lot more skills. Uh, I had just bought a house, so a lot of renovation projects meant that I was learning more and more things. And it just, especially during the pandemic, became un intolerable for me to sit on my ass over the course of a weekend. Uh, and I really needed to, to do something with my time. And that's what led me to take on another project like this after all the housework was done. And I figured along the way, I would learn all of the skills that were tied to it and it would continue to improve not only myself, but the car as well. So I would learn aspects of uh, mechanical engineering that I hadn't learned before, uh, electrical engineering and how to repair, diagnose and fix those issues. That's something that I'm still really weak on and I'm really looking forward to, to picking it up. I would learn how to redo an interior if necessary and repair those issues. And then as I got more into the actual end state as to what this project is going to look like, uh, you know, adding those, uh, those IoT devices and those, those modern sort of mobile hacking dystopian sci-fi elements, uh, I wanted to be able to learn more in the, in the guise of programming and UX design. Uh, and then, you know, to be able to fit it to the car, I needed to learn, you know, fabrication and 3D printing. And so that's kind of where I figured this would lead to. It would serve not only a purpose to bring a car back, build it, and then make something that would be iconic to my own you know, wants and desires, but it would make me a more stronger, well-rounded, well-skilled person. Uh, and even, even this video series, uh, you know, starting to record and videotape and take pictures and share my experience along the way would teach me things like uh, how to shoot videos, how to edit them, Photoshop, and some other skills that I had had, you know, previously slightly before, but it would allow me to, to polish them and improve them along the way. 
So then, that takes me to my next, uh, next point. How did I settle on the Porsche 944? There are a lot of options to choose from, you know, from the 80s that match that sort of angular design. They were all over the place back in the day. And honestly, if I had all of the money in the world and, uh, and, no, and, and no, nothing holding me back, my first choice would be a Ferrari Testarossa. Those cars look fantastic out of the gate. They're pretty fast. They're excellent Grand Tourers, which fits with that outrun style where you're driving down a highway in the middle of the night, hammering towards a distant city. Uh, but let's be real, I, I, I don't have $100,000 to buy one of those, and they're only going to get more expensive as time goes on. Maybe, maybe in the distant future, in 10 or 15 years, I could get my hands on one, but I have always said to my wife that I don't really think that I want to own an old, own an old Italian uh, supercar, just because of the maintenance cost and how difficult it is to, to keep those things running on the road. Uh, next to that would have been like a Countach, but you know, as far as a build goes, those things are so already insane looking, you don't really need to do much to them. And that led me down the road of a couple of other car choices. Uh, the first one would have been a DeLorean, kind of like that one that we saw previously, uh, that started kind of this whole thing here. But, you know, DeLoreans are expensive, even for bad ones. Their maintenance is a pain in the ass. There's not a whole lot of customization that can be done to them, short of turning them into a Back to the Future movie prop. And, and frankly, it just seemed like more effort than I wanted to put into it, and more cost. Uh, next choice would have been a Mitsubishi Starion, but those are really hard to find. There are not a whole lot of them stateside, and, uh, you know, good luck finding one. And, you know, finding parts for it, too, I imagine, is not very easy as well. But they're just, you know, so beautiful looking. The other thing, too, is, is that a Starion was kind of designed after the 944, so I figured, you know, why not go to the source? Uh, the next choice was uh, an RX-7 from the 80s, but I am not masochistic enough to take on an old 80s rotary engine or to do a swap this, this early in the game, so I wasn't, I wasn't keen on that idea either. Uh, and that led me to my last two choices, which was like a Mark III Supra. I really like the design of those, especially, uh, you know, in comparison to the Mark IV. You know, I'm never going to get my hands on one of those until they just start to crater out, but I don't know if that'll ever happen. But the Mark III, I think, is overlooked and is an absolutely beautiful car. It has the same design cues that I was looking for, the pop-up headlights, the, uh, the angles and the lines and stuff like that. But trying to find one is, is difficult, especially one that's in good condition. Um, you know, I didn't want a complete uh, rust bucket. And the other thing, too, is, is that the interiors look incredibly dated. If I'm trying to build some sort of retro-futurism resto mod, that's kind of a hard place to start from. And that led me to the 944. And this made a lot more sense to me. For one thing, uh, you know, the styling was there. The stereo, like I mentioned earlier, was actually, you know, uh, an imitation of the 944. I just recently bought my first Porsche, which was a, um, which was a Boxster, a 981 version. So I had really started to come to, to like and respect the way that they prioritized handling of the cars, which is, you know, half the fun. I wanted something that was, you know, going to be super fun to drive as opposed to unknowns around a DeLorean or some of the other uh, vehicles that we had. Uh, there are a lot of them. There, uh, especially when I was searching, there were 10 or 11 of them that were for sale in the Portland area. Uh, and so I had a lot more choices to choose from as far as picking them up. The interior is, is timeless. Uh, you know, it, it looks really, really good for the time and it still looks pretty modern nowadays. Not a whole lot to change except for all the tech that's gonna go into it. And uh, compared to all of those other cars, the Supra, the Starion, uh, obviously the Testarossa, they're cheap. Uh, or at least they were. They're starting to definitely creep up in price uh, as people are starting to, you know, learn more and more about them, I think. And the parts are already available and the community exists that really, you know, helps figure out these cars and make it so that way it was something that I could do on my own. So there you have it. That's the background on how I got into the OutRun style scene, why I chose the Porsche 944, and I'm really looking forward to sharing this process with you guys as I go through this whole, uh, process of self-improvement, building out the car, and, and sharing with you the end product, hopefully one of these days. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.